Good morning, Connections. I'm glad you're here. We have been talking about discipline. And discipline in relationship, as we're going to talk about on Sunday, of our friend and family relationships. And how, if we get those right and learn how to accept accountability in our life, how to accept discipline in our life, that it makes it easier for us to relate and understand why God enforces discipline in our relationship with him. Now, yesterday we talked about the discipline isn't directly tied to punishment. Discipline is learning how to live within the boundaries that God sets. And that's why we're going to turn our attention today through several passages to emphasize the importance of God's word. And that's why I continue to drum home that we must be in God's word, learn God's word, so we can develop the vocabulary and a better understanding of the boundaries that God sets and why he sets them for us. And it all links back to this idea of discipline. We intrinsically know what is within the bounds and which what is outside the bounds, what pleases God, what displeases God. But until God spoke through his word and defined those boundaries clearly, sin wasn't a thing. Now it is, because it's been clearly defined, and you need to know what is sin and what isn't sin, and that you have no wiggle room. So we start all the way back in the Old Testament in Deuteronomy, and I want to pick up here in chapter 4, verse 1. And now, Israel, listen carefully to these decrees and regulations that I am about to teach you. Obey them so that you may live so that you may enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. Do not add to or subtract from these commands I am giving you. Just obey the commands of the Lord, your God, that I am giving you. All right, we're not going to be able to spend a whole lot of time on any one uh, scripture today because we've got five of them. But catch that last bit. Do not add or subtract to what God's word speaks. And unfortunately, we live in a world where we are now subtracting over and over again to make the word more appealing to a broader audience. We have decided that we know better than God. And when we do that, we end up compromising the boundaries that God clearly sets for us by expanding them, we think we're doing a help. But if we are being judged by those standards and living within those boundaries, and just because we feel like extending those boundaries, doesn't mean that when we get before God, that he will honor our expanded boundaries. Again, we know what pleases God and what displeases God and his word makes it very clear. And that is what we're responsible from sharing with one another and handing down from generation to generation. We need to make sure we are not compromising God's word. Just a little further down in Deuteronomy, in 9, it says, But watch out, be careful never to forget what you yourselves have seen. Do not let these memories escape from your mind as long as you live, and be sure to pass them on to your children and grandchildren. We have a responsibility. Whether we're talking Old Testament, New Testament, the reason why we have a relationship with God is because someone in a generation before us has passed their faith on to us, has encouraged us to get to know God through his word, and we have that same responsibility to pass it on to the next generation. The reason why things get fuzzy and the reason why um, there are many seasons, if we look in the Old Testament, where the Israelites fall away from their relationship with God is because someone drops the ball, no longer teaching their children. And the people of Israel lose their way. And it is only after someone discovers God's word and gets the people back in line with God's heart that they are able to receive forgiveness 
and move forward in a right relationship with God. That same thing happens in our culture. And I could point to today and suggest that that same thing is happening in our culture at this very moment. That the waters are becoming muddy and what is within the boundaries and what's without the boundaries is being confused by the church itself. And soon we will lose track and the people who believe that they are a Christian will find that they no longer are in tune with God's heart. Once again, we have to emphasize that we cannot compromise God's word. So let's move to the New Testament and remind ourselves that everything that God speaks, God is never changing. So everything that God spoke to the Israelites stands true today. God has not changed his opinion on sin from Old Testament to New Testament. Now, we do have an understanding that we are not saved by living by the, the letter of the law. We are, are saved by God's grace. And we'll, we'll kind of understand the nuance of that as we move forward. But Jesus, as he comes on the scene, wants to make certain that everyone understands he is not rewriting God's word. This is not a new way. This is the same God that is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and, Z and Jacob. And now everything that has foretold of the Messiah is coming to fruition. And Jesus says in Matthew 5, 18, I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not even the smallest detail of God's law will disappear until its purpose is achieved. Does that mean we have to know all of the rules and regulations that God set out for the Israelites? Well, simple answer is yes. Well, how are we to do that? Well, thankfully for what Jesus accomplishes on the cross and for our ability to, to receive salvation by his action, Jesus has also simplified the law. Jesus says in Matthew twenty two thirty seven, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. If we look at all of the laws that were handed down through Moses, they all have to do with honoring God or taking care of our neighbors. As we talk about relationships over the next few weeks, and we talk about how relationships opens the kingdom to us to experience God's presence and power like never before, that's what Jesus is speaking when we understand God's heart, when we understand why he disciplines his children in the way that he disciplines, why he sets the boundaries that he sets for us and expects us to live well within those boundaries, we understand it's about honoring him or it's about taking care of one another. And in doing those two very simple things that we sometimes make very hard, then we have a better understanding of just what it is to have relationship with one another and relationship with God. And finally, if we turn to, to Paul's teaching to his disciple Timothy, found in 2 Timothy 3, uh, verse 16, it says, All scripture is inspired by God and useful for to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Open your Bible today. Discover God's heart. Discover why he sets the boundaries he sets and why they should never, ever be moved. 
This is not for only our health, but for the health of those that God calls us to reach. Please do not mistake God's boundaries for an absence of love. God loves those he disciplines and disciplines those he loves. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your word. And it's not open to interpretation or it's not open to, to our own, uh, how we would do things in your place, Lord. It is rock solid. And that's a gift that you have blessed us with for our well-being. The target doesn't move. The boundaries don't shift from who sits as president or, or what the, the cultural trends are of the time. You are never changing. And what pleased you 2,000 years ago still pleases you today. And what angers you and frustrates you and leads your people into death are still active as well. Lord, teach us your ways. Help us understand how you relate to your people through the Old Testament and through Jesus, that we might find our way home by submitting to your discipline. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, meet you back here. We may take a few left to right turns over the next couple of days. Know that I love you and I miss you. And please be good.